This question is testing to see if we can understand the difference between um, logical runtime and syntax errors, if we can spot one of those errors and suggest how we could try and fix one of those errors. So we've got an algorithm here, so some instructions to follow, and this is supposed to check to see if a positive integer, so an integer is a whole number, positive means greater than or equal to zero. Um, so if the user types in a positive integer, um, they should be told if that number is divisible by 3. That means, is that number part of the 3 times table? So, um, if the programmer types in 6, um, then they're told that 6 is not divisible by 3. Well, that's wrong. 6 is divisible by 3. Um, if you divide 6 by 3, you get 2. It goes perfectly. So, it should say 6 is divisible by 3. Um, so, this is a logical error because there's an error in the logic of our code. It does exactly what it's told to do, but it's told to do the wrong thing. It's logically wrong. Um, it calculates the wrong thing. So a logical error doesn't necessarily make your code crash, it just makes it calculate or do the wrong thing. A runtime error would be something that will run when you press the run button, um, but at some point it will crash because um, uh, it might be trying to read a file that doesn't exist, it might be trying to read something over the internet when the network connection dies, it might be trying to divide by zero, which is mathematically impossible. Anything unpredicted that causes your code to crash um, and that you haven't handled it correctly. And a syntax error, a syntax is like the grammar for code, so it means you've made a grammatical mistake somewhere, and that stops your code from running. So as soon as you try and press run, it just refuses to, it won't run at all. So syntax error means you've probably um, got the wrong symbol or missed off a symbol or made a, a mistake with the name of a variable or a function or something like that. Anything that stops your code from running. So let's have a look at the logic of our code and try and work out where the problem is. So for 9a part 2, we have to say which line number the mistake happens on. So let's trace it through line by line. If the user types in 6, why do they get told? that 6 is not divisible by 3. So we can ignore the first line, it's a comment. User input is what allows the, the user to type in 6. And we save 6 into a variable called n. Then we've got a while loop, which will check and keep on repeating whilst n, which in our case is 3, is greater than or equal to 0. Well, 3 is bigger than 0, so we'll loop round. n is n minus 3, means whatever's in n, which is 3 for us, we reduce it by 3, and we save the answer back into n. So 3 minus 3 is 0. n is now 0. Let's see, do we loop round? Is n greater than or equal to 0? Well, n is 0, and n is equal to 0. So yes, we do loop round again. We say n is n minus 3. If n is 0, min 0 minus 3 is minus 3. So n is going to be minus 3. Do we loop round again? Well, is minus 3 greater than 0? No, it's not, so we're going to stop. So if n equals 0, well, it doesn't now because n is minus 3, so we do else. Output is not divisible by 3. So that's what's happening here. So there's two possible places where the mistake might be. It could be here. We could say whilst n is greater than um, 0, that would fix it. Or we could say here, if n equals minus 3, that would also fix it. So you've got two possible answers here. Um, I think it would make more sense if we just changed this symbol to be a greater than symbol. Um, so that would be line 4. Um, and then you'd need to explain what change you'd make. Um, so we'd change the greater than or equal to to a greater than symbol. Or if you'd said it was line 7, you'd have to say we'd change the n equals 0 to n equals minus 3. Either of those would work. Um, then we've got a different type of error happening. Um, what type of error could occur if the user types in 8, E-I-G-H-T? Um, if they do that, then we're going to save that text in n. And we can't compare 8, E-I-G-H-T, with a 0. We don't know whether it's greater than or less than or equal to. So we're going to get a runtime error at this point. Um, our program will crash. Um, you might say a type error. If this was Python, you'd um, get a type of runtime error that's called a type error, which is saying um, that you're trying to treat some text as a number and it just doesn't cope. 
So you'd write down that this is a runtime error. Um, then we've got um, to write down three tools, so one mark for each, that could help the programmer reduce the number of errors that, they, um, that occur when they're writing their program code. Um, so I think I've got pasted the, um, sorry, I think I've got copied, no I haven't, let's have to have a look on here. Um, these are the possibilities, um, and let's go through what each one means. So you'd get one mark for any of these, up to a maximum of three. So, first of all, you could say a watch or a variable table. Now that means as you're running your code, um, your, uh, you'd be able to see what, in our case, n is at any point. So you could watch and keep track of the, the contents of any variables. Um, you could say a breakpoint. Um, which is, you could say, I want to run my code, but stop it when it gets to, say, line 7, or stop it when it runs gets to line 4. So you could set a breakpoint on a particular line, and when you run it, it would stop at that point, so that you could see what the value of all the variables are. That's a breakpoint. You could say, step through, and that means instead of running your whole program, you can press a button to run the first line, and then run the next line, and then run each line in turn, so you can step through each line and see the logic of the code as it happens. Um, use of an IDE. Um, so uh, usually the IDE has all of these other tools in. Um, so I don't think you'd get a mark if you named an IDE, but you, if you say that you could use one such as Eclipse or um, Idle or PyDev or um, PyScriptor or whatever, um, then we've got syntax colouring, that means um, it would change the colour of your code in accordance with whatever you're writing, so if the colours are wrong it, it's a good indicator that you've made a syntax error. Um, code completion, this is when if you start writing some text it will um, try and carry on writing the, the code for you, so you might write out and it would suggest put because it thinks you're trying to write output can be irritating or it can be really useful because it saves you making some um, some spelling mistakes and syntax errors. Automated integrated testing, um, you wouldn't get a mark if you just said testing by itself, that's not a tool, that's a technique. Um, so automated testing means um, can you press a button and it will run certain tests on your code and you can define what those tests are. So you could automatically test your algorithm with, I don't know, all the numbers between 1 and 100 and check that it detects the right ones to see if they're divisible by three. So you can write some code um, to automatically test your code. Or a compiler or interpreter, this means the compiler um, would, uh, you press a button and it would check through all of your code and try and generate code that your computer could run, and that would tell you usually, um, it would often say there's an error on line seven if there's a syntax error or an error on line 10 or something like that. And an interpreter means you can type out one line of code at a time and then run it, and then type out another line of code and then run it. And um, so any of these things here are tools that programmers can use um, to avoid making um, mistakes. You just need to be aware of three of them to get your marks.